Hello, I'm Professor Liu, here today with a special guest artist, Clara Ancaza, who is back to review the entries from the February Art Dare and also to announce the winners. Welcome to our video where we present tips and advice for visual artists. If you would like to grow as an artist, but you can't afford an art class, or if you're trapped inside, like the whole planet right now, unfortunately, we've got you covered here at Art Prof. We've got tutorials and critiques. Clark, for people who maybe missed our first video about the February Art Dare, can you give people a quick overview of your comics and how they have to do with the theme, Your Inner Voice? Right, so I'm doing a personal project where I create weekly comics and each comics is sort of based on my own exploration of my mental health and then and a large part of it involves dealing with my inner voice and this inner voice is this annoying voice in my head that really gets in the way of life in general. So it's also my way of dealing and coping with it, you know, trying to visualize what this inner voice is saying and how to, you know, deal with it and get on with life without having the inner voice get in the way. And ironically, this series of comics that you're doing has actually helped you a lot, right? It has. It's it's very therapeutic, especially because it gives me some sort of purpose where every week it's like, okay, I, I need to make something new. And it's also something I really enjoy doing. So it gives me something like fun to look forward to. And the process of creating these comics also allows me time to really self-reflect. So it's been really good in my like self-improvement. Absolutely. And if you guys would like to see more of Clara's work, she has her main Instagram, which is Clara on Casa. And if you want to see her Instagram that focuses just on her comics about her inner voice, go to this Instagram page. Wow, we got a lot of people in the chat. Hello. 10,000 Crows, Pennington, Sea Coast, Christina, Rebecca, Tammy, Phoebe, Danny, Julia, and Dylan. So happy to have all of you guys here, especially those of you guys who are going to have some of your artwork featured in this video. All right. Well, Clara, let's take a look at some of the entries that we got. Um, let's start out with Danielle. And Danielle did two paintings. This first one is called Cultures. And this one is about being between two cultures and she also did this one called i'm stressed so clara what's your reaction to danielle's paintings here i think my first reaction would be like it those are really nice painterly brush strokes where it's like it, you're not trying to make it into a realistic painting i i can sense like your own style and it's very pleasing to look at and also like the color palette is also very warm for sure i feel like in this particular close-up that we're looking at right now those like little wiggly wormy white strokes they're a little bit unnerving but they're sort of doing exactly what i need them to do which is to talk about like being stressed and having this overwhelming emotion that's coming across and these are such a great comparison because there's such different versions of the theme like this one's very emotional but then this one is talking about being um between two different cultures and so it, it's so interesting to me that danielle had such a different interpretation even though they're both portrait paintings so that was a really cool thing to see in danielle's work and let's move on to look at this next piece which is by Chill Matrix. The title of it is Face Value, and it's digital. The, t the text, I'm just going to read out loud so people can hear it, says, not everything has a deeper meaning. Some things are just meant to be taken at face value. What's your interpretation of this piece, Clara? What do you think? I mean, my first thought was like, that's true. That's very <laughs> true. And I, I think the mistake that some people may make with this theme is they try... They think too hard about it when, you know, maybe sometimes your inner voice isn't really saying anything. Maybe you're just being you. And I, I like the fact that it's like a twist on the theme where it's like sometimes your inner voice isn't saying anything. Sometimes there's no deeper meaning to things. 
Oh, I didn't realize that Danny J, that you are Danielle. Oh, so cool. So it looks like we've got Danielle live in the chat. That's terrific. Sometimes when you guys have different usernames, I can't always identify people so well. But anyway, thank you for letting us know. Uh, Danny is saying I'm Canadian, but also Asian. Oh, cool. Well, thank you so much for that explanation. That really helps us looking at the piece a little bit more. But getting back to Chill Matrix's piece, what I like about this is the honesty behind it, because have you ever seen this thing, Clara, where when people are artists, sometimes I feel like we're in a competition to see who's deeper. <laughs> like, ooh, who, who's thinking deeper thoughts now? It's really annoying, don't you think? Yeah, no, sometimes things are just what it is. Like, it's red because I like red. It does not represent anything, like that kind of thing. Exactly. Like, why do you have to go so, like, heavy-handed into explaining everything? I mean, I know I probably sound a little bit like a hypocrite because I do get into things sometimes, but other times I'm like, that's just what it is. <laughs> Deal with it, right? <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. see. Dylan Wilson saying, it reminds me of Renee Magritte's pipe. It's giving a meaning while saying it has no meaning at the same time. Oh, Chill Matrix is here too. Chill Matrix, I don't know what your YouTube username is, so sorry if I can't identify you guys as quickly as I would like to, but thank you so much for joining us, you guys, and for doing this art dare, because I do think this was a trickier art dare than some of the other ones we've done in the past. Don't you think, Clara, in terms of really engaging with the material and, and the subject? It's like you had to work pretty hard to do this art dare. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot of thinking and also once you get to trying to like deal with your inner voice you, it's you kind of spiral into overthinking at least like that's me so I can imagine people being like oh I don't I can't figure out what to do oh I see Phoebe P is chill matrix okay see you guys are all messing with me when you guys have different usernames on different platforms not easy to keep track of things. That's okay. I'll forgive you just this one time because you guys did such a good job on this art dare. Okay, let's move on to Kate Christian. And this is a piece which is done with acrylic collage and Photoshop. And the title of it is Inner Voices. So what do you think about Kate's piece? Wait, hold on. This was Photoshop? It looks like oh, it was photoshopped afterwards. I can't remember what Kate wrote in their statement, but it's a combination of a whole bunch of things. Oh, okay. But like either way, I really like the contrast between like the colorful blocks of shapes and the text. I always like, I'm a sucker for like putting text into things, especially when it's like a collage and like you don't really need to read it. It's, it's just very nice to look at aesthetically. And like the cogs, I've always liked cogs as like a representation of like the inner workings of the mind. So this is a good visual representation of inner voice. Well, I think Kate did a really nice job of incorporating the text, but not letting the text be such a big distraction that we're like scrambling to try to read every single little word, because I feel like that's a very common problem that I see. And you know, what's really odd about the gears is that I know that they're gears, but there's also something very joyous about them. And I always think about gears as being so mechanical and rigid. And so I see a real feeling of enthusiasm in this piece, even though we're looking at an image which is supposed to be mechanical. I don't know. What, what's your take on the mood of this piece, Clar? I think the color definitely helps bring out like a very vibrant feeling to it, where shape-wise it still reads as machine, but the the choice of colors, it's very, I don't know, I guess like a word would be brave and exciting. It's just, there's no inhibition in the color choices. Rebecca Cortez is saying this is very intriguing as a psychology graduate, reminds me of the grinding and process of the mind, very beautiful. Christina saying, I wish my artwork had a narrative. Mine are just pretty pictures. Well, I don't know that I would sell yourself so short, Christina, because I have not seen your artwork, so I cannot be the judge of that. But I don't know. Sometimes I think that we are like the worst judge of our own artwork. I don't know about you, Clara, but when I look at my artwork, all I see is mistakes. I'm like, yep, messed that one up. That looks crappy. I wish I'd screwed, you know, I totally messed up that area. So I don't know that I always trust myself <laughs> to be 
accurate as far as perceiving my own work. I don't know. Do you do that or am I nuts? <laughs> of course I do that. Don't you know me at all? I doubt every move I make. So yeah, we are our own worst critics, honestly, which is why it's important to show your work to other people. Absolutely. Seacoast is saying, Kate's is like a frenetic, chaotic, joyful dance. Great. I love all these comments, you guys. Okay, let's take a look at this next piece, which is a 3D artwork, and it's called Fortune Cookie Mobile. It's made out of paper and clay, and I believe that this artist wanted to take a very different spin on this idea of the inner voice, because Clara, from what we've seen from your comments, your inner voice is not that nice to you. <laughs> Oftentimes your inner voice gives you a really, really hard time. But in this piece, the inner voice is a lot more positive. And I think you see that in the visuals. So what do you think about this interpretation? It's a very creative approach to this theme. And I love the calming and serene feeling I get from it. Not just like the fact that it's a mobile and I, I don't know, just the little wispy papers, especially like the words on it, like be kind to yourself and you are enough. It's very, I need to hear that. And I think my inner voice would say that. Your inner voice needs to take some cues from this particular artwork. Nathan E. Yeah, exactly. saying something about this seems really organic and simple, but also so outside of the box. And Rebecca says, this speaks to my introverted mind. And what do you think about the fact that this piece is different media? Because we have these fortune cookies, which have been modeled out of clay. And then we have the mobile. I mean, this artist is balancing a lot of different components. Do you think that it's working? I, I think it's definitely working because it it's a lot of different components, but it harmonizes well together where it's like, I can see those things together. It makes sense. There's no part where I'm like, why is that there? I feel like a big part of the reason why this piece feels cohesive, despite all the different types of surfaces, is all those blues and the fortune cookie color, they're all sort of similar in terms of tone. Like you don't have one that's like super dark and one that's really bright. They're all the same gradient. And so I think that helps the piece feel a lot more congruent. And you know something else? One thing that I think is really cool about different assignments or art dares is that you know how certain art dares, they sort of push you in a similar direction. And then when you see somebody who takes like the totally opposite spectrum approach, I'm always interested in that as well. So th this was really great to see such a different type of approach to this particular prompt. Dylan Wilson is saying, I thought those were little Pac-Man characters <laughs> until I looked closer and realized they were fortune cookies. So much more oh, me I finding tea for me. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Seacoast is saying, reminds me of Buddhist paper scrolls. Very peaceful. Really cool. All right. Let's take a look at this next one, which is by Angeliki Castrolon from Panama. They actually go by Kika. And this is a piece that was done in pen and Photoshop. And what I thought was so cool about this art dare was that they wrote this uh, comic. I think it's in Spanish. I could be totally wrong. I'm sorry, Kika, if I'm totally messing this up. The point is, I think it's great that it's not in English because although Kika did give us an English version of it, I just love that we have such an international community that people feel that they can do that for these art dares. I think that's wonderful. So we're gonna go through each panel, Clark. So you've got the whole comic in front of you, obviously, but what was your take on this piece? It's it's so simple. Like the lines are so organic and the subject itself, it, like it's just her writing and yet there's so much, it's very nuanced. Like I, I relate to this so much where it's like, yes, my brain also goes faster than my hands. I understand what you mean. And it also has a really good message where it's like, okay, since you have so many things in your head, you don't really have time to worry. So don't worry. So it's very simple and yet it holds like such a nice meaning to it. Let's see. In the chat, Starving Artist is saying, this is lovely, very engaging, intrigues my mind to work it out. Rebecca says, yes, Spanish. Okay, good. Didn't completely humiliate myself <laughs> with my misinterpretation of a language. 
Caitlin Smith is saying it makes me think of how a future can be put on you as a child by parents, connecting it to the mobile. And Enoch is saying my brain moves much faster than my hands. The translation. Yep. And you know something else? I think, Clara, I don't know if you've seen this before, but I feel like I see a lot of artists who are really good at visuals, but oftentimes their writing skill just isn't as good as their drawing skill. And I feel like what I love about Kika's piece, it's beautifully written. Like, to me, the simplicity of the words, the honesty of it, it's so raw and genuine. I mean, I really, like, without sounding like a total, um, you know, corny, silly person, <laughs> like, I was so moved when I read Kika's piece. Like, I just thought it was so beautifully written. And you know, as somebody who writes comics, how important the writing part of the process is. Why do you think that's so hard for a lot of artists to have their writing match their visuals? I think what's really important in writing that a lot of people overlook is the pacing. And this comic in particular has a good pacing where it starts with introducing like how the person is feeling and then it elaborates. And then it sort of ties everything together really well in the end, where it sort of like has an uplifting message. I think pacing is just like really important, especially when you have visuals that go along with it. Oh, Kika's watching live. Very cool. Yeah, I just, I love this piece, Kika. I just think it's so well done. And I like that the visuals are not overdone. I like that the figure isn't trying to be anatomically correct or anything. And I think that's something that to me has a real rawness to it. It actually makes me think a lot of Shel Silverstein's drawings. I don't know if any of you guys know his work, but he wrote those poetry books called Where the Sidewalk Ends and Light in the Addict. Um, Kika, if you've never seen Shel Silverstein's illustrations, you've got to look him up because I think you would absolutely love looking at his illustrations. Phoebe P saying, I like how the panel outlines are also organic it adds to the piece as a whole. Exactly. You know, like Kika, you probably could have like measured out those borders perfectly and made them straight, but I don't think that would have matched the tone of the voice. So I like how um, imperfect a lot of the line work is. All right, let's take a look at the next entry, which was actually from a seventh grade art class at the Jackson Heights schools with Katie Morris, who is their art teacher. Clara, what was your reaction when you saw, wow, this group of seventh grade students did my art dare? What was your reaction? I think my heart kind of like grew a bit when I saw it because it was so sweet. Because now that I think of it, it is a very interesting exercise, especially for kids, because I don't know, their mind's so innocent. And I, I like the way they imagine, uh, visualize things that are in their head. And it's just very creative to see the sort of images that they come up with. And I can, I can just imagine that it's, it's a fun activity for them to do. And it's so funny to see the different subjects that they wrote into their pieces. Like this one we're looking at by Jenna, it's actually pretty abstract. Like they say ideas, they have thoughts. And then there are other kids you look at what they write and it's so specific. It's like Minecraft. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just love how there's such a range of topics that are very concrete and very practical, but others just seem a lot more, I don't know, philosophical and abstract. I, I just love seeing that range. And Clara, what do you think about the range of visuals? Because some of the students use these like almost charts to divide up their faces. Like this girl has all these sticky notes that she's hung up. What do you think about those different formats that the kids chose? I think it just goes to show that there are so many different ways to do something and there's no like right or wrong way. And I love looking at the diversity and variations because you know what, when you start with something that you're not really familiar with, you don't like a set, you don't have a set idea of what something should look like and therefore you can create like so many different things and i think that's what this class managed to do because there's like such a large range of like an organized chart and then there's like a landscape and then there's this something that looks really abstract there's lots of mentions of horses and i'm like wow it's just so creative i know i just love it and the other great thing i think that 
Katie Morris, the art teacher, had mentioned was that she really wanted her students to engage with their artwork in terms of the theme. Because I do think that that is somewhat common that when you're younger, you think that art is just a visual experience. It's like, oh, I want to make something that really people get excited about because it's so beautiful or because it's so odd looking or something. And I just love that Katie Morris, the art teacher, that she's not underestimating what her students can do, that she's giving them something that's pretty substantial and asking them to really engage with their artwork. And you can see the results I think are wonderful. So we were just thrilled to see the submission from the seventh grade art class, because that is just to me, the coolest thing that we can reach a whole bunch of 12 year olds somewhere else on this planet. Okay, let's move on and take a look at these three submissions by the same artist. This is Seacoast Griff Daly, who I believe is in the chat with us live right now, which is very cool. So we have this first piece, which is called Graveyard of Dreams. We have another one called Box That S Word Up. Don't want to get demonetized now. <laughs> and we have this close up. You can see there are all these different pieces of text to label the boxes. It says future, passion, intimacy, knowledge, joy. And then we also have this other one, which is called Whistling Past the Graveyard. So what do you think about these three pieces, Clar? I think they, they work really well as a series. Not only because like the color, it really works well together, but I, I also see like this uh, for the one in the boxes, there's a book and I think it also says like Graveyard of Dreams. And I love how that connects to like the next one. And it's those like subtle connections between like these three images that I was like, yes, that's really good. And also the one with the boxes. I love the metaphor because it makes sense. It, it really relates to how unpacking your inner thoughts could be, feel like, you know, unpacking actual things. Like it's the same kind of feeling. It's annoying. It takes a lot of time. You get distracted, especially when you get to the box with the rage and anger. It's like, yes, I feel that. Yep. That's pretty much how I feel when I have to box stuff up. <laughs> it's just like the biggest pain and it takes forever and it's not satisfying. Like there's nothing good about it. So no wonder this person is completely about to rip their hair out. Nathan is saying, wow, the two landscapes remind me of Cezanne. It has a similar color scheme. And Phoebe P is saying the strokes of the graveyard one remind me of those found in the background in the scream. Oh, very cool. And Seacoast is saying, Clara, yay, I wanted them to connect in a subtle way. Well, you did a great job with yeah. that, Seacoast, because, you know, Clara, when sometimes people are trying like way too hard to get you to like notice something, it just feels really forced. And I love that you stumbled upon that because I actually didn't see that until you just said that. I mean, I'm sure if I spent more time with them, maybe I would, but I like Seacoast that that was like a little Easter egg that you buried into the piece. I don't know if you were thinking that people were going to see it or not, but I think it's great when people notice that because it really enhances the piece a lot. I like this piece a lot because the figure in that shadow and then the light that's coming down, I think is very dramatic. I think it's a really beautiful area of light that's happening in that scene. Salty Person saying, the style of the strokes of the graveyard looks like a painting I have in my house. The colors are very beautiful. Yeah, what do you think about the colors in these pieces, Clara? It's, I don't know how else it, it's very, I love it just because it's very moody and yet it still has a lot of vibrant colors. It's not exactly a very happy painting, but it in includes a lot of color that I would usually use in paintings that like, like is supposed to like show happiness, but it, it's kind of like a bittersweet feeling when I look at the use of colors here, especially the one in the, the one with the bridge as well. It's good use of perspective and I love the sky. It's very atmospheric. For sure. MC saying, I love the first one where it's like, what am I looking at? It's engaging, really cool style. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna look at this piece by Hannah Kelly, who's from England. This piece is called It's Never Perfect and it's digital. And this is actually one of the few ones that somewhat similar look in terms of having a comic, having like one color scheme, 
sort of similar to what you're doing stylistically, but at the same time, it's totally Hannah's own thing. So what do you think, Clark? I agree with it. As in, like, that is me. I I agree with everything. The idea that is, like, try. yes, I don't know how else to say it, but, like, yeah, so many ideas, so little time. That is very true. It's very, it's very relatable, especially for creatives where, like, again, like you said earlier, we are our own worst critic. So when we see our work, it's never perfect enough. So you just end up trying new things and then you end up starting again. So it's very relatable. What, what I think is so cool about all of these entries is they're all really specific to the individual artist that made the piece like I would never make a piece like this this is so not the visual style that I would think to do if I were to do this project but the thing is I'm looking at all the entries and I read the text I'm like I totally have been there like I totally have been the person who's like oh my god I got no time all this stuff I need to do it do it now but oh I can't now I shouldn't start you know, like I totally identify with all of the thoughts that people are putting into the work and I think that's what made this art dare really fun is that it is very specific to the artist, but we can all relate in a similar way. Yeah, Christina Todd's calling it the artist curse. I would say that's accurate. And Nathan's saying, I feel like having a lot of meaningful text just works with simple drawings. I feel like if the drawing was too complex, it would distract from the meaning. Yeah, I think that's a great way to think about it, Nathan, because you need the text in the image to balance each other out. And so you can't, work with them by themselves, you have to say, okay, how do they affect each other? What is the balance that's going on in the piece? Caitlin is saying, I always have to finish my painting. If I hate it afterwards, at least it's done because the acrylic it can always be painted over. That's true. That is a very good thing about painting. All right, let's take a look at the next piece, which is by Anchor Herman. And Anchor is 13 years old. Oh man, I am so glad that I was not 13 when Anchor is 13 because I would have been so intimidated by this if I'd seen this when I was 13 years old. And it's an oil on canvas and it's called Captured in a Thought. So what do you think, Clark? Were you painting like this when you were 13? No, I'm not even painting like this now. <laughs> you're 13? What? I didn't know you were 13. But no, this is very beautifully painted. I don't think I've ever been able to achieve that kind of like soft gradient and yet the lighting is still so strong with like the strong shadows, the really nice contrast, especially like underneath the blindfold. I mean, I think what's amazing about this, first of all, it's an oil painting and the contrast is so good. I don't know about you, Clara, but when I first started oil painting, the thing that I really had a hard time with was everything would get so muddy so fast. And I really had trouble keeping like clean highlights and really rich blocks. Like everything would just turn to mud. And so the fact that Anchor is like pulling this off so well and getting like these beautiful, subtle blue shades into the skin tone, it's a really technically well-painted piece, but it's also very mysterious. I mean, I feel that it's a very emotional painting. So, wow, Anchor, great job. <laughs> you did amazing work with this portrait. Let's see, Christina saying the friggin' teeth. Ripple Bakwa says, this piece is giving me the Lovers 2 by Renee Magritte. Oh yeah, absolutely. That totally reminds me of that. And Rebecca saying, it makes me wish I started painting earlier in life. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, when we see stuff like this, we're like, okay, ship has sailed for me. <laughs> I can't go back and redo that part of my life. Okay, let's take a look at the next piece, which is by, I cannot pronounce their name, so I'm so sorry about this. It's Bumi Korn Kongtavilert from, I believe, Cambodia. And this piece is called The Curious Incidents of Boys on Saturdays, Oil, Spray Paint, and Acrylic. And by the way, we actually did do a live critique on this painting, I believe two days ago. So Lauren and I talked about it. If you guys want to check out that video, definitely do that. But Clara, what do you think about this piece? I think it's a really good use of mixed media where 
I can see that he uses like a, a lot of different things and yet it looks really good together. It manages to combine in a very cohesive way. And I also like the brave use of color where it's just like, bam, it's green and then it's orange and then it's blue. And and yet the, I think the topic is for about the military, right? And I love the idea of putting some like chaos into something that's supposed to be like kind of drab and orderly. And I think that's a really interesting juxtaposition in this painting. It's a really emotional piece. Don't you think like that figure in the lower left hand corner that's like glaring at us? Wow, that is like really, really intense. And by the way, you guys, if you would like to look at people's artist statements, because this one has a great artist statement that the artist wrote, just go to artprof.org, click on Art Dares, and I have posted all of the artworks there. Everybody's Instagram links, everybody's information is there. So that way you guys can check out the other artists if you're interested in their work. Okay, we've got one more piece to look at before we announce the winners. Don't go anywhere. We've got this piece by Alexa Payne, and it's called The Colors Inside, and it's done with water-soluble uh, pastels. So, Clara, what do you think about this piece? I love the contrast between, like, the very geometric, straight-angled gray perspective with the organic shapes and the very vibrant colors. And is that color pencil? I think so. It is. And yeah, I, I love the texture that it brings as well. And also the shadows. I'm such a big fan of the blue shadows that's being used here and the red blush. It's, I mean, obviously people don't look like that in real life, but it's, I love that representation of like human where everything's just very stark. Ripple of Aqua saying, I love the intensity of the eyes. If you start from top left and head to lower left, there's a real sense of narrative in the scene. And Rebecca says, nice background. Yeah. Good job on that linear perspective, Rebecca, Alexa. <laughs> I, I am like, you probably know this about me, Clara, but I've become like the linear perspective police. I'm like, you didn't measure it out, did you? And the students are like, no, sorry. I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> sorry, that's just what happens when you teach linear perspective. But I think what I like about this piece is the contrast between the background and the figure because the figure is so like, bright and intense with colors and then the background is this like very cold geometric environment and I feel like that contrast with the figure in the background really comes across well I think otherwise sometimes you get figures that seem like they're stuck in the background too much and this one really comes forward very beautifully let's see Seacoast is saying I'm reminded of Daryl Hannah's character in Blade Runner starkly beautiful oh I love that character she's so creepy but awesome Christina's asking do gel pens count as ballpoint pens for this month's art year yeah I would say they do I think we had at least one or two people who did gel pens so I think that would be cool and Kika saying the use of colors makes you pay a lot of attention to the person Rebecca says it reminds me of a prison scene wow, don't we have the most amazing audience, Clara? Like everybody's so like super articulate and thoughtful and like supportive. It's like the best thing. Like you never thought you could have a place like this on the internet. It's just so awesome. Okay, guys, yeah, you ready? To go We're going to announce now we have an honorable mention to announce and we also have a prize winner. So the honorable mention goes to Katie Morris's seventh grade art class because we were so excited about their work. Clara, why did you pick their stuff to win the honorable mention? I mean, it's, there's just so many different approaches they took. I was very inspired by how imaginative they are. And it's very, I think, heartwarming, I guess, to see what kids think of. It's, I, I think like the fact that a lot of them were like horses, Minecraft, YouTube, mother. And I was like, oh, your inner voice is so pure. I wish I can like have the inner voices of a kid again. And also it seemed like they had fun and they were very engaged in creating this. And I feel like that effort deserves some reward. <laughs> And I, I have to tell you guys, I know that those of you watching, you guys are all different ages. And trust me, I think you're all fabulous. But I get very emotional <laughs> when somebody submits or participates who's really young because I remember being that age 
and loving art so much and not really knowing how to go about doing it. And so the fact that we can engage with people at that early stage of their lives artistically, that's amazing to me. Like that just blows my mind that we have the capability to do that with the technology today. So technically Clark gets the credit for choosing this seventh grade art class, but I'm right behind you on that one. Okay, you guys ready? Prize winner is Anemone from Germany for their fortune cookie mobile. Clara, why did you pick Anemone to win the February Art Dare? Okay, there were layers to this decision where like, first of all, it looks amazing. It's very calming, serene. I love the soft color schemes. And then it's also a very creative approach. It's 3D, it would, like, you don't normally, I don't know, like you don't normally think inner voice, let's make a mobile. And I was like, oh. but then it works. So again, very creative out of the box. And also the message is very inspiring where it's like, yes, our inner voice should be kinder to herself. And, you know, I love the concept behind it where you sort of like try to train your inner voice to be kinder. And like, this is what your inner voice should be like. Really cool. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are pretty psyched in the chat. Thank you so much, you guys. By the way, in case you didn't know, there's only two more days to submit to the March Art Dare. It's ballpoint pen drawing. You can submit today. You can submit tomorrow. And if you guys don't know how to do that, you can submit on Instagram. Just use Art Prof Dare and also tag us. You can also post it on our Facebook page. And if you don't have either, you can just email me. So just go to artprof.org, click on contact. You guys can find my email there. And I hope you guys will take some time to explore artprof.org because there's some pretty cool things going on over there. And I hope you guys will subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you to all of you guys for your wonderful comments in the chat. Thank you, Clara, for being an amazing guest artist for this February Art Dare. Hope you guys stay safe. We will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.